Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.1 and iOS 15.2 Beta 2 have been out for a little while. I wanted to talk about the overall experience of iOS 15.1 a little bit and 15.2 Beta 2 I've been using full time on my 13 Pro Max. Now the first thing is a new feature. Now I showed this in my what's new video but there's a new macro feature where if you have your camera turned on, maybe we go to photo and we bring up something else, maybe we'll bring up an iPhone 11, you'll see as we get close there's a little macro flower that shows up at the bottom. So if I bring that away you'll see the flower disappears, you can bring it up, it will switch to macro, and then you can lock the macro camera. This is a new feature and it has to be enabled by turning off auto macro, so that's on the Pro and Pro Max. So if we go to our camera settings under camera, and this is on beta 2, turn off auto macro down at the bottom, then at the top go up to preserve settings. Under preserve settings then you need to go in and make sure that auto macro is turned on. If auto macro is on then that little flower will show up and now you can lock macro so it doesn't turn on and off when you're trying to get a photo or a video. So it's a really nice update. Now as far as iOS 15.1 I've heard a lot of different things from a lot of you. So on the YouTube community poll there's over 15,000 votes and many of you are saying that it's one of the worst updates you've seen in a long time. And so on the YouTube community poll we'll take a look at that in a moment. But if we go to the YouTube community poll, you can see all of these comments. I read these before the video and there's 16,000 votes at the time of this video. So tons of votes. I really appreciate that. And 179 comments. So based off all that information, many of you have been saying that 15.1 is one of the most buggy versions in a long time. There's freezes, lockups, problems with notifications, sound issues, CarPlay issues, and more. In fact, it's one of the first times my wife said that she's actually had battery issues and she mentioned that. She rarely mentions issues. She's got a 12 Pro and she said the battery was bad and she never has issues with it. So there's definitely some things going on. Now some people are going to have an opposite experience. But when it comes to iOS 15.2 Beta 2, I've been using it full time on my 13 Pro Max and it seems to be fairly good for the most part. There's a few odd issues and one thing I noticed is with cellular. I've had a lot of issues with cellular switching with T-Mobile and I tend to notice that it's with 5G UC. So I don't currently have it where I'm at right now, we'll give it just a moment. You'll see I have LTE where I'm sitting right now, but generally if it's 5G and then it switches to the new UC version, I won't have connectivity. I'll actually have to turn on airplane mode, turn it back off, then it will connect and it will work properly. This is an ongoing issue I've been having with this phone and I thought the modem update might fix it but that's something I noticed. If it's just 5G and 4G it switches fine, it's just UC. So I'll be sure to report that in the feedback app and make sure Apple's aware of that if they're not already. Now while Bluetooth is not an issue for the most part, it does seem to take a lot longer for AirPods to connect for me. So if I have AirPods 3, they might connect and you'll see they're open here next to my iPhone, they might connect, but sometimes they just don't connect quickly and I'll have to go manually select them. While it's not the hardest thing to do, it does seem to say that it's connected, but generally if I play music, it won't play in the headphones. So I'll have to manually select it or deselect it and then select it again. It seems to be an ongoing issue for me and that's something I noticed with Beta 2. Also, Apple did mention that if you're using music streaming a lot, you could have an issue where it will use a lot of the battery since it's using a lot more processing power. I've noticed this to be an issue for me specifically when streaming music. My battery has been below 50% before going to bed and that's pretty unusual. And you'll see for some reason my data is quite slow right now, maybe because it's on, I'm on Wi-Fi and a little ways away from my house, but you'll see if I turn that off, data should load a little bit more quickly. And if we go into music, things are okay as far as loading, but sometimes battery is just really used up a lot by streaming music, much more so in the past, but Apple did warn about this in their notes, so not a huge deal. Now the good thing is most people did not mention any issues with Bluetooth and in fact the majority of people that mentioned issues didn't mention anything about Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and very few about cellular connectivity. However, there are some people that are having issues with widgets disappearing, so whether you're using the weather widget or something else, also very slow loading on music if you're using maybe the high quality options. So maybe you're using lossless in your music settings. If we go over to our settings here and we go into music, and we'll find that. I wish they would put these settings right in the app, but if we go into music and maybe we have the quality 
turned all the way up to lossless audio, high quality, and all of those things, it makes a difference. Now, it's going to be a little bit slow depending on your data connection because, well, it's a lot of data to pull down. But it's one thing with streaming that it should make a difference for quality, but it's very slow for some people. Now, the other issue I hear a lot is notifications. They're not always coming in together. So notifications sometimes just don't show up properly for some people. They're working okay for me, it seems like, but quite a few people are having issues with that. Now, as far as performance is concerned on older phones, whether it be an iPhone 11, 6S Plus, haven't really heard any complaints on the newer version. Scrolling is fast, using the phone is fast. Let's go back into the app library and scroll. Seems to be a bug there. That's something I haven't seen before. So if I go into the app library and try and scroll, it won't let me scroll. So that seems to be a bug that I haven't seen before that I'll need to report. But scrolling seems to be fast in general, switching between different apps, things like that really don't seem to have an issue in this update. So that's a good thing. For most people, they're saying that the overall cellular and everything else is working well, but there's just some small bugs here and there. So that's good news if you're coming from iOS 15.1 and then we're waiting for the next version. Now, speaking of the next version, iOS 15.1.1, I really thought would be out by now. Now, maybe Apple will never release this version and instead we'll just have beta three this coming week, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. So we could see iOS 15.1.1 along with a beta three, or we just might have to wait until iOS 15.2 is released to the public, which I would expect either sometime in December, maybe early December, or it could be pushed all the way to January, but that's highly unlikely looking year over year. So hopefully we have it sooner rather than later for those people having issues on 15.1. However, 15.1.1 would mostly be just a security and small bug fix. So maybe they could fix a few different things, but most likely we'll have to wait for 15.2 with its new features and more. I also would expect maybe some new emoji with 15.2. Typically Apple starts to adhere to the Unicode standard and there should be some additional features other than just the macro lens and the app privacy report that's included in this update. So hopefully we'll see more of those in the future. Now, as far as battery life overall, it's been okay other than the music streaming issue that I said. So if we go into battery, on my 13 Pro Max, I'm at 100%. And if we take a look at the battery over the past couple of days, yesterday you'll see I had four hours and 11 minutes of screen on time, seven hours of screen off time, and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe maybe music using something in the background it shouldn't be, and I used about 50% of my battery life. Now the 13 Pro Max gets amazing battery, so that's not terrible depending on the phone you're on, but it's not as good as we had with previous updates. So last Sunday, or Saturday, it just depends on the day, I had much less usage with the same sort of use of the phone. So again, a couple days ago, three hours and 13 minutes, six hours and 44 minutes of screen off time. So if you're having those issues, I would recommend closing music in the background, see if that fixes it, but there's definitely some bugs in this for me with battery. It's not as good as previous versions. However, this is only if you're using Apple Music and streaming a lot, so I think that's not really too much of an issue for a lot of people. Now, battery life on iPad has been, again, about the same about five to six hours of screen on time. So not really that good with my overall experience. I haven't really had any crashes on it, but again, you'll see I charged it last night at 12.34 a.m. to 100%. Today I've used it one hour. Well, today I've actually used it 55 minutes and I'm already down to 86% battery life. So the battery overall is just not great. I'm mostly using Safari, YouTube, and Notes and then Find My use is using some background activity. The overall performance and everything on it is fine. I haven't had any crashes, but battery life seems to come and go with the iPad updates. So I hope they improve that in the future. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll and comments, let's take a look at that. And you can see at the time of this video, I'll refresh it, there's 16,000 votes. So again, I really appreciate anyone that participated. Obviously quite a few of you care about these sorts of things and how it's doing. And 15% of you are on the beta. Now compared to last week or the last time, only 14% of you were on the beta. So this time, 15% are on the beta, 71% of you are using iOS 15.1 still, 4% of you are on iOS 14.8.1 or older. And the nice thing is if you're on an iPhone 12, you could still downgrade to that. And 1% of you are still using iOS 13.7 and 9% of you are using Android. So again, thanks for voting if you did that. Now let's take a look at some of the comments. Steve Carrero said, I just gotta say iOS 15, 15.1 now, is the crappiest update that I ever experienced. And I have owned nothing but iPhones since the spring of 2008. The screen freezes and apps, and in general, just functions and downright crashes. These are things that I never had to deal with. 
I've been using the iPhone 10 since late 2017, still definitely not on board, but it's definitely disappointing. And so some people have been telling me this. I think it's better than iOS 13 in my experience, but for some people it's going to be different. Running iOS 15.2 beta 2 on my iPhone 12 Pro, having some battery drain issues, but overall very smooth experience. Promo 130 says, also very weird. I never use ringtones, always silent, but without changing anything, I got a call and I heard a ringtone. Very weird. Lou Levin says, so far it's been okay on my 12 Pro Max, and I finally found out why my battery health drained from 100% to 87% in nine months. Apparently the background app refresh was always on. The rep at the Apple store said that's probably the culprit. I'm still extremely upset that my battery health is crap. They won't replace it till it reads 79%. I would disagree with that. Using your phone in general with background app refresh isn't going to decrease the battery health. However, when you're cycling the battery more, bringing it down from 100% to zero or any combination of the two. So one day, 100% to 50%, the next day you use another 50%, that's one cycle, you'll use battery health more often. But 10% in one year is completely normal and I wouldn't really worry about it. You're just a little bit over and you could also pay them to have them replace the battery, but I don't think app or background app refresh actually caused that. Ninja Shep says, battery life has been significantly worse since updating to iOS 15. I'm really hoping that they optimize battery life better on iOS 15.2. I regret upgrading to iOS 15 because it's my phone's battery life in half. Like I said, you can always downgrade to 14.8.1 if you have a computer and you wanna do that. You may have to start over though. Waldo Guzman says, iOS 15.2 beta 2 runs great on my iPhone SE first generation. The only issue is the storage. My iPhone 12 Pro Max is my main device with iOS 15.1 and everything is good. Jeremy DeBose says, beta 2, 13 Pro Max and iPad Pro. Good battery and performance, still a few bugs. Group messages still shows as individual messages on iPad. They're working on fixing the notification summary bug. Also, when I send a message, the bubbles kind of shake, sometimes randomly and streaming music is in any high quality makes it load slow, even with good signal strength. Jason Shepard says, using iOS 15.1 on my iPhone 11, and pretty much like I've heard others mention, 15.1 is just horrible, and I too am waiting for a software update, hoping that 15.2 gets here soon, or that Apple realizes that 15.1.1 update is needed. Farid Mohammed says, iPhone 11 Pro, iOS 15, Point two, beta 2, battery draining faster than beta 1, still some stutter, application crash, and notify when left behind is grayed out, which Apple feedback app replied and told me the fix is in the near update, or a near software update, which is great to hear. Federico Trevisani says, iOS 15.2 beta 2 on my iPhone XR has been quite good for me. No major issues, no huge battery drain. I recently replaced the battery and I noticed a significant improvement in performance. To be honest, there's a lot to be fixed, especially concerning performance. Mudith says on iOS 14.8.1 on my iPhone 11, waiting for 15.2 final release. So as far as iOS 15.2 beta 2, that's everything in that. Hopefully we see a beta 3 this coming week and maybe a 15.1.1 release to the public. I think that would be great for those having issues with their phone, with their battery life and more. Let me know your overall experience in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.